All right, Chuck's Chat, week five NFL. First things first, we'd like to apologize for not being here last week. Um, not to brag, but I am a great friend and had a buddy get engaged, had to celebrate him and his fiance. Uh, and my other friend is a coach at a college football program, so want to go support him. Um, so, yes, I am a great friend, if I must say so myself. Um, so, just did not have time to make a show, which, ironically, um, and why I always push following me on the Action Network app where you can see everything that I bet, since I didn't have a show, everything won. Bears, Jags, Bucks, Ravens, four out of five legs in a round robin. Uh, so, yeah, that's what happens when I don't have a show. Everything hits, which means that this show that I'm doing today, uh, this is Friday right now as I'm recording this this show that I'm doing today, everything's going to lose. Um, that's just how this thing works. All right. So um, week five. Uh, and yeah, the, I would have loved to send out my week four recap and week five look aheads, but it would have just felt disingenuous um, saying, oh, best bet. I won everything when I didn't actually send anything out. So again, follow me on the Action Network app Four weeks like that, because sometimes I don't know if I'm able to record and uh, things like that happen. So um, I'll, I'll link it again. I'm sending it out in the newsletter. Just follow me there and you'll see everything. Um, so hopefully we can keep things rolling this week, get some winners, and uh, continue to build upon the last couple weeks here. All right. So I actually haven't placed anything yet. I'm just waiting on um, certain numbers. But, of course, I will, you know, as we record right now on Friday, we'll have just have some – we'll grade based on the numbers that – um, I talk about and go from there, but you know, I, I will be waiting on some things. First game that I wanted to talk about was the Cincinnati Bengals hosting the Baltimore Ravens. I'm going to be on Cincy in this one, so we'll call it plus two and a half right now. I'm waiting for a three, patiently waiting for a three. I don't think it's ever going to come, but I'm going to be on the two and a half. What I like here is a general, general philosophy thing. So like I said, was on the Jags last week. Fading teams that have – well, actually, I I was on the Jags and I was on the Ravens. So fading primetime results, I think, is a general good thing, good practice to have. Jags obviously lose 47-10. I was on the Jags in that one. You got to have no fear. Went back to the well. Jags covered against the Texans. And the Bills – win 47 10 all of a sudden they're getting two and a half they they then they get slapped around so we go from bills best team in the nfl to oh crap maybe they just played the jags cardinals dolphins um and hadn't really gotten tested and they got exposed last week uh they're listen josh allen's great he's if you, Patrick Mahomes didn't exist. He'd be the best quarterback in the NFL. However, um, that the linebackers and the safeties on that team are going to keep them from probably getting to the AFC Championship, and they're not winning a Super Bowl. Uh, I'm fairly confident they're not winning a Super Bowl with the way that defense is constructed because they got expect they can't cover tight ends, they can't cover receivers, um, and they they played a bunch of teams that uh, the Dolphins for whatever reason didn't game plan to take advantage of those weaknesses and obviously Tua got cussed and got knocked out of the game the game was already over at that point when that did happen but when they play these teams when they step up in class and play these good offenses they're they're just not they're, they're gonna need Josh Allen to be a superhero to win those games and like would you trust that to happen every game no okay so Ra- Ravens Bengals Ravens uh, uh, they they blow out the Bills. So now now the conversation is, oh, Ravens are the best team in the NFL. They smoked the Bills. That was I I just thought that was a great matchup for for Baltimore. At home, Sunday Night Football, 
Um, game that they kind of needed. The urgency was certainly higher for the Ravens uh, than for the Bills in that one. So Cincinnati, I think we can say the same thing this week. Cincinnati, one and three. Baltimore, um, they're two and two. But this is kind of the Ravens season. You can't really – or excuse me, this is kind of the Bengals season. You can't really um, drop this one to go to one and four after already losing to the Chiefs. Um, and if they win this one suddenly, there we have a race in the AFC North. Um, why I like this matchup for Cincy, uh, I think the Ravens can get beat deep, and that's where the Bengals excel. Uh, they can really attack the secondary, which I think is the weak point um, of the Ravens. And Cincinnati, a deep, you know, the, the offense I really trust. Um, they played well against Kansas City. Unfortunately, they had the strip sack and the fourth and 15, fourth and 16 uh, defense pass interference. But um, aside from that, they 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 played really well in that game. And they typically play, we've seen, they typically play to the level of competition. I, they, you know, the, the Panthers had a great offensive game last week, but the reason I'm not terribly concerned is that they're getting a lot of reinforcements back on the defensive line this week. Um, McKinley Jackson, Chris Jenkins, Miles Murphy, uh, Trey Hen- Hendrickson is going to play. So that's going to really help. The, be- the Ravens are going to be able to run the ball, but I think the Bengals will just be able to keep them more in check than they did against uh, the Panthers just because they just didn't have enough bodies. Um, and with with the level of familiarity between the Bengals and Ravens, and we've seen, you know, since Joe Burrow came to the Bengals, like they, they've been able to beat the secondary consistently. Um, so I, I just think they're going to have a lot of success through the air. Ravens haven't been getting as much pressure as we've seen in years past. And, I think they'll be able to take advantage with the familiarity of Lou Anarumo with this Ravens offense. I think they'll be able to keep them in check enough to cover this number. And like I said, the, the, the urgency here, Bengal season's kind of on the line here. Any hope they have winning the division is hanging on this game. So waiting for the three, I'll take the two and a half as a, one of my best bets here. And like, like I said, the, you know, conversation with Bills, best team in the NFL, Bills, 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 Bills. They get smacked around by the Ravens by 25. Now it's, oh, Ravens are great. Bengals are terrible. Sets up a nice opportunity. Bet the Bengals. You're never as good or as bad as you look in prime time. It's a week-to-week league. Give me the two and a half with the home team uh, on Sunday. Um, Second bet here that I'm looking at and you know, we'll grade it at minus three, but Anthony Richardson needs to play for me. I don't, I don't want to go against Joe Flacco. Joe Flacco messes up the calculus here. If Anthony Richardson starts, I love the Jacksonville Jaguars here. We're going back to the wall. I'm I'm just going to bet the Jags every week. It looks like, but um, Jags are minus three in this one. We have an own four team. Laying three to a two and two team, that just doesn't see that it doesn't feel right. It stinks. You gotta bet the Jags here. Um, the Colts haven't won in Jacksonville since 2014. This is kind of a house of horrors to them. Jags, this is, I mean, I don't know how many last stands they have left. This is like the third straight week of them having a last stand, but this is the last stand. The Colts are a team they can take advantage of, and they have had their number. Um, like I said, the Colts haven't won there since 2014. Jags, just a, a brief history of one, four or five. They swept them last year. And last year when they beat them by 17 in Jacksonville, the Jags were coming off of a London game at, with no buy. And typically that's just a horrible spot. And I actually remember I was on the Colts in that game, which was a horrible bet. Um, but 
just because I, I thought, oh, coming off the London game. Again, I believe they had just beaten the Bills, if you guys remember that. They had back-to-back London, beat the Bills, then came home and just smoked the Colts. Now, Gardner Minshew started that one. But this is just, this is pure lines. lines. It feels like the line's telling us everything here. Minus three for Jacksonville. Why? Why is an 0-4 team favorite against anyone? The, the, you know, the, really the area that I think the Jags can have success is the Colts have a bad defense. Um, we saw last week, like Steelers, you know, they were in a bad spot because they ended up trailing and they were chasing, but they moved the ball well against the Colts. Um, the Packers with Malik Willis did whatever they wanted against the Colts. Like this just isn't, and again, the, 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 how, how, um, Gus Bradley, the defensive coordinator, he has such a vanilla defensive scheme and basically anyone can beat this team. Just looking at the injury report, it is, let me pull this up real quick. The Colts injury report. Oh, I didn't type in the right thing. Hold on. Hold on. Colt, so, Kenny Moore, DNP. Cordy Pay, DNP. It's a corner and defensive end. Um, that's big. Uh, Ryan Franklin, DNP, on Thursday. Jonathan Taylor is not going to play. They're kind of the walking wounded. Again, I need Anthony Richardson because Anthony Richardson, he's so up and down. Like, at least with Joe Flacco, I feel like he'd be able to diagnose the defenses. But Anthony Richardson is going to give us one here, I think. So, I'll lay the three. Just feel it's just such a stinky line. I have to take it. So, we'll go to Jags. Uh, minus three, last stand game. They need it. They need this one so bad. Colts off the big win against the Steelers. Just feels like a great spot uh, to back Jacksonville. Um, you know what? Do I do four? I might do four. Might have to do four. Uh, we'll go Sunday night first, and then I'll, I'll do a fourth one. We'll have four best bets. Why not? Uh, Sunday night football. Pittsburgh Steelers minus two and a half. Um, Cowboys are the walking wounded. Again, I, th- I think it's a great spot for Pittsburgh. I know Dallas has 10 days off. Uh, truth be told, I'm just going to take the money line. But like I've said in the past, I'm not doing anything more than 130 to tell you guys. Just take the, you know, for official grading purposes because it's a cop out. But I'm just telling you what I'm doing because I don't want them to win 1917. Uh, but I'm just going to take the money line here. Pittsburgh. Um, minus two and a half. Dallas, no Demarcus Lawrence, no Michael Parsons, no Brandon Cooks. They're missing their two best, no Deron Bland in the secondary. So they're missing their best two pass rushers. They're probably their best two defenders uh, in this game. Pittsburgh off a loss. So this is a Mike, Tom- a great Mike Tomlin spot of, hey, we need this one, guys. Um, and I just I don't know. That the problem that Dallas has is that this is the best defense they've played. Offensive line isn't very good. We saw last week Tyler Guyton was just getting ragdolled by Kayvon Thibodeau. Now staring across from his number ninety, T.J. Watt. How's he, how's he going to handle that? Um, Cowboys can't run the ball, and now. It's it's CD Lamb. I, I talked about this week one when they played the Browns. It's CD Lamb. That's it. That's all of it. No Brandon Cooks now. How are they scoring? They're gonna have to get real creative to do it. It's not like they ran away and hid from the Giants. Like the Giants kicked five field goals. They kicked a field goal on fourth and goal from the three. I it, you know I didn't come away from that saying wow Dallas is really good. I came away from that thinking. You know, Dallas is fine. Borderline playoff team. Like, I don't think they're winning the NFC, so they just don't have the dudes. 
And now you're going into Pittsburgh, who's off a loss. I just think it's a great spot to lay the number here um, with Pittsburgh. And I, I think they get a big win um, on Sunday night. Last one. We'll do four. Fuck it. Why not? London game. We're going to London. New York Jets plus two and a half. Again, waiting for a three. I'm, I'm a patient man. We're going to grade two and a half for the show. Um, This is just a sell high for me. I'm going to sell the Vikings. We haven't been on any Vikings games this year. Either side, either, side, either way. Um, but it's kind of like I really wish I had a show last week. Um, it's unfortunate that I didn't do it, but Bucks lose to Bo Nix, get embarrassed. They come out and they smack the Eagles around. Let's just do the if you lose to Bo Nix, bet that team the next week. Jets lose a horrible game, they were terrible. Um, all the talk to Aaron Rodgers, this Robert Sala, that they shouldn't have lost that game. Now, going overseas, they have a Vikings team. And here, here's where I think there's an advantage for the Jets. And this could all sound really dumb because the Jets may just – you're we're, ba- we're trusting Nathaniel Hackett, which is a tough spot to be in. But I think the advantage that the Jets have is that the Vikings schedule – has been Daniel Jones, Brock Purdy, C.J. Stroud, and Jordan Love. What do those – forget Daniel Jones. But what do the last three guys have in common? They're all really good players, first of all. But what do they all have in common that puts them at a disadvantage against the Vikings? Brian Flores is an elite defensive coordinator. He's good at confusing young quarterbacks. Aaron Rodgers has seen it all. So, the question then becomes, it's a two-fold question. The first is, you know, how good is the Vikings defense in reality? I think they're a good defense. But the way that they have just dominated these young guys, how much of that is just how great they are, one. Two, Two two of those were at home. They're obviously not at home because it's a massive home field advantage. Jordan Love was rusty, like coming off of an injury. Plus, he's young. So, you know, this feels like, although it may not be the best offense they played, I think it's it's definitely the most advanced quarterback as far as between the years. I, do, I don't think Aaron Rodgers of the four is the best one, but I think he'll be able to do things against that defense that the other guys are just not mature enough in football to know how to diagnose it. And the other question is, are the Jets even good? Because there, there's an argument to be made that you just back the Vikings because they're the hot team and they've, you know, they've, they've just been better than the Jets. And the Jets, we don't really know. Like, they, they got smoked by the Niners. Then they beat Titans – who will love us. So, you know, he's not great. Uh, then the Patriots, not good. Then they lose to Bo Nix and the Broncos. So it could be a, we're not downgrading the Jets enough, but I mean, this number moved from Jets being favored to by one and a half or two to now them being underdogs by two and a half. I just don't think that, Between this week and last week, there's a four-point difference on a neutral for these teams. This is a bet on the defense, the Jets' defense, to come up big. This is a bet on the Jets' defense to show something this week. Because they've been good. Aside from the San Francisco game, they've played very well. And a bet on Aaron Rodgers being able to see things that – um the other guys just haven't been able to see selling high on the hottest team in the NFL, the biggest darlings, the most improved year over year and just ugly, ugly early morning, nine thirty AM just taking the jets, hold your nose, take the jets 
and hopefully come out on the other side um, with an early victory to to kick off the day. So, again, this is kind of a quick rundown here, but um, four best bets here. Vikings, oh, excuse me, that uh, Freudian slip. Might have to take the Jets out now. Jets plus two and four best bets. Jets plus two and a half. Bengals plus two and a half. Jacksonville Jaguars minus three. And the Pittsburgh Steelers minus two and a half. I'll also have a money line round robin. I'm for sure including. I might just leave the London game out of it and just do one, four, and eight. But I'm doing the Steelers are going to be in it. The Bengals are going to be in it. The Jags are going to be in it. Um, and then I think I'm probably going to add Denver. Just because the Raiders are kind of in shambles. There's a lot of shit going on with them. And maybe Houston. So, yeah. Four best bets. Jets plus two and a half. Bengals plus two and a half. Pittsburgh Steelers minus two and a half. Jacksonville Jaguars minus three. Let's have a big week five. Glad to be back. If push comes to shove, I will just start recording earlier if I know I have things coming up because I probably should have done that, but I didn't. Apologies to the people, but we will. Um, yeah. I don't know. We'll figure it out. All right. So let's get some winners this week. Happy to talk to you guys. Um, good luck. Let's make some dough.